So we're going in on the... On ending B. I don't know how to how to say that, because it's sort of... We're not, we're not doing ending B. We're starting the chapter that ends in ending B. Um, which is the first 9S chapter. And when we get a little bit more insight into the world um, at large, uh, this world, not our world, I mean our world too, right? Um, but we get a bit more insight into the um, the goings on of, of Yorha and of the machines, beginning with this incredible opening sequence, which um, knocked my socks off. Uh, the first time I played up. So the thing about this section that is really impressive is that um, the game provides you with uh, an organic introduction to controlling the machines. Um, it, uh, it sort of introduces the, the idea that it's possible to um, take control of these as, as a player, um, which you end up doing as 9S by hacking. Oh yeah, I gotta find the bucket. Where is the bucket? over there. Um, so eventually we do have the ability through 9S to hack into the robots and um, and use them as one might use a bucket. Um, but they, they introduce this concept here in this introduction. It's also the first time, you know, restarting the game after being told like oh there's more there's more to it once you've beaten ending a there is more to it and then immediately getting this uh, this machine centric moment that's um you know adorable and sad very sad very melancholic um, and in a moment we'll see the context of this happening because it doesn't really it just it just opens here and you can kind of tell you're in the factory area but it's not it's not immediately apparent um, why you've been given access to this moment but soon we will know you can also if you jump or, or walk over something, you'll uh, drop the bucket, which I'm not going to do because I just want to get through it. But if the first time you play it, you Doesn't can kind of screw it up a couple you times. Little guy. You can't make a machine your brother. So this is the, this is essentially the same point that ending A begins. Well, looks like it's time. But from the perspective of 9S. Um, we watch the descent of uh, 2B and the rest of the ground Yoha units. And um, we get a title screen as well. Um, and I think... Operator 210 to Unit 9S. Come in, 9S. 9S here. Go ahead. The Yoha troops have commenced their descent. Disable the enemy base's defense systems immediately. Roger that. And I think this is such a perfect way of... of re-beginning the game again, like, giving you, um, giving you 9S's perspective. Oh, also, you can get an ending here. I'm not gonna, again, I'm not really gonna bother too much with the, the sort of the optional jokey runaway endings, um, but you can do one here. Um, I wonder if there is anything. Alert. Defense systems cannot be reached from the ground. Yeah. 
If you go down here, I think you get that that ending. But I don't know, can you reach that robot down there? I've never tried. I don't, I, I can't really be bothered. It's fine. We'll just continue. But I, I do think, yeah, if you run away, you uh, you get a, another um, another ending where you know the androids, the android fled, and the the threat was not able to be contained. Um, so yeah, now we're nine S uh, approaching the point at which he and Two B first meet, and you get a similar. Um, Schmuppy kind of introduction. You retain your levels as well from the from the first playthrough, so you don't start back up at level start at level one again. So the the difficulty continues to scale and increase, and the enemies you fight uh, get more powerful as well, which is a good way of doing it. Like they could have very easily done a you know just like you start at level one again, but um, I'm glad that they did not. Uh, and then we can begin, we can do a hacking for the first time, so, uh, bad first hack, <laughs> I was distracted, let's, um, let's try again. Uh, so, yeah, the hacking minigames are, um, are great, they're, um, such an awesome, um, optional combat element in the game that, um, adds so much depth to the world and to playing the game as well, because like, it kind of, it, it re, um, it recontextualizes the, the shmup, um, bullet hell moments. Hey, ask you about, <laughs> I'm a hacker, I'm a hacker, I am bad, I am, well, I've, it's been a, it's been a moment since I've had to, I'm sure by the end of this playthrough I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be much better, but thank you for, thank you for joining for the, the 9S ending. Uh, yeah, and that's what I was about to mention, the audio processing on the music, turning, seamlessly turning each of the songs that already have so many, you know, different versions um, attached to them, like versions with vocals, versions without, versions with different instruments playing at different times. And then uh, the addition of like a chip tune version of each of the songs the when the hacking minigames begin. To give our a chance. You have um, four targets that need to be hacked. Be advised that hostiles have been detected around each target and must be defeated before continuing. So yeah, introducing the hacking now through this moment. Um, and the hacking becomes like very integral to uh, the player's understanding of um, 9S as a character, but also the player's understanding of the machines um, and androids as being sort of linked. The, the fact that both of these um, computerized, like, mechanical facsimiles of humanity in, that have, like, you know, different levels of humanity attached to them, whether it's, like, visual or... Is now accessible. Yeah, um, yeah. One affirmation will suffice. Metaphorical. Fine. Um, you know, the, the, these, these, two, these two, like, creature types are both are linked inextricably in many ways and one of those ways is the ability for them to be packed to be accessed um, and destroyed from the inside um, so yeah you get this this little uh, tutorial I guess where you have to break your way through these these uh, specific like break your way through the maze type hacks uh, come back later and are much more difficult this is like a very easy introduction to, to the to the hacking element. It's also really funny because, like, you get you briefly get a moment in ending A where um, you are being hacked. I think from memory, I think um, Simone tries to hack you, and it happens very quickly. The game doesn't tell you what's going on. You're just given this like weird top-down view where you're suddenly a triangle in this like little arena, and you have to um, figure out what you're doing. And um, most normal people won't be able to immediately work out what it is and then you and then you don't get told really what it is and then you're shown this moment again here later and it's like oh that's it recontextualizes this like this thing that happened um early in the game and yeah so i, I think that's that's the that is the genius of these multiple playthroughs is i keep saying recontextualization i think like that's 
that's going to be the, the buzzword of this playthrough, is like taking things that have already been established, or already been shown, and then showing them to you again with additional information or additional mechanics, additional characters later on when we get A2. Um, and, um, and that's how you that's how you grow as a player um, and as a consumer of the, the story. That's how your knowledge increases. Like sometimes there's like a real dramatic irony going on where you as a player understands more of what's going on than than you know, the character you're playing. For instance, you know, like replaying the game from this point as 9S, knowing the fate of 9S and 2B at the end of this playthrough. Um, oh god. Um, you know, it's an interest interesting way of doing it. I should have stood closer for that. I wonder if the... Um, I can't see yet. But I wonder if the plug-in chips carry over. It's been a while since I've done this. Since I've gotten to this point, so... Can I even... Oh, I guess I can't access that for now. Which makes sense, I suppose. But yeah, word of the day, recontextualization. Um, I'll try not to say it too often, because it's... Because, I, I mean, I've kind of made my point, I guess. Yeah, the the uh, the other cool thing about the hacking is the way that um... God, listen to that version of the song. Fantastic. But the way it, as you come back out, it just seamlessly flows back into the. Hacking complete. One target remains. Man, this is a real pain. Other version. May I remind you that personal chatter during operations is restricted? Fine. You also get a little bit more insight here into Ni the character of 9S, which, I mean, we, we've learned a lot about 9S, and we know that he's sort of a an immature, um, naive, uh, kind of rash, like, boy. He's a, he's a boy. Um, he grows a lot in the story um, through hardship, but when you start this playthrough, like, it really... Um, really hammers home his his whole vibe. The other thing it does is it puts into context the uh, his polite banter with 2B when they first meet. Like you know he's very friendly, but like the uh, the kind of the rash boyish um, aggre aggression is is gone. I think in a, in an attempt to sort of impress this woman that he's spending time with. It's, 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 it's like very, you know, um, like this powerful figure that he suddenly uh, equals to, you know, partners with. He is a boy. That's right, Asky Bud. Just a, just a, I know, like, reminds me of like my friends from high school. <laughs> You know, maybe there's some, maybe there's something sort of problematic about like a romantic pairing um, that's so uh, unequal, I guess, in emotional maturity. Um, but I guess, I mean, it's never like, you know, Two B's not exploiting Nine S. It's it could it could have been handled way worse than it is. However, there is only one unit remaining. Oof, must have been rough out there. The enemy's defensive weapon is making things more difficult than we estimated. And that one unit? My friend 2B. <laughs> yeah, murder by strangulation is also a sort of a problematic image, isn't it? 
Um, I mean, look, it's this is not. I would I would never say that this is a perfect piece of art, but um, but look, the flaws and the the issues with it, I think, are just as interesting to talk about as um, as the good stuff. It is a really rough way to die. It's also funny, I, you know, I was reflecting on ending A a lot after Whoa. replaying it last week. Get and, a lot um, of that thing. Firing missiles. Firing missiles. <laughs> so calm. Oh yeah, I've got the, the sound effect volume turned down. Um, ending A ends so hopefully, right? Like, the 9S kind sure of he's actually dead next time. resurrecting. You're 2B, right? My name's 9S. I'm here to provide support. Copy that. So, was that big old buzzsaw the Goliath you came here to take out? No, just another defensive system. Oh, well, uh, I guess we have to find the target then, huh? I've got a flight unit, so I'll take a look around the perimeter. All right, I'll work my way inside from the ground. Yeah, that's, that's right, Ask you about. I am also not playing my horny sad Android game looking for a moral compass. Although, I mean, it's, uh, as consumers of, of anything, we can develop our own internal moral compasses by uh, consuming art that challenges what? us and... I was going to send you the map data I collected you know. earlier. Do it. Also interesting to note, uh, pretty much all of the dialogue between the two characters moving you know, forward is completely different. I'm glad you're here. Why? Scanners like me mostly work alone. Scouting out enemy lines and all that. I don't usually get a partner. It's kind of fun. Emotions are prohibited. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. And another thing. Stop calling me ma'am. Huh? It's unnecessary. All right, then. To be it is. Those, those bits of dialogue are exactly the same, but most of the kind of... Um, the cutscene dialogue and a lot of the interactions with NPCs, because you're controlling 9S, I guess 9S ends up being kind of more um, your avatar in the world and, and takes control of the, the conversation a little bit more often. Um, come on, let me kill you. Yeah, retelling, absolutely. Retelling rather than a replay. Um, and there are moments, I think, I, you know, I read, like, when I first played the game, I read, like, a pretty thorough um, comparison that between the sure two. Big. I guess use it as a weapons factory, but now it's just crawling with machines. The enemy seems to have repurposed the facility to increase their overall machine production. So if we don't destroy it, they'll just keep coming. Um, yeah, and I think that the... the the differences are really interesting from, from memory. I can't, off the top of my head, I cannot remember the exact differences, but there are, it's just you know. accessing random, nonsensical data from the old world. There's no actual meaning behind anything machines do. And we know that to be untrue. So now it's like, it's cool replaying it um, from the start, knowing that the characters are wrong about, um, the information they have about the machines and about your heart and about you know all of that stuff uh we still haven't been explicitly told that um or have we have we been explicitly told that the humans are dead i can't remember i surveyed the entire factory but couldn't find anything resembling our target maybe they i don't know moved it somewhere is that you mean, the birds? Yeah, there's more plants and animals here than there used to be. Probably because the environment's changed. There should be another facility across that bridge. It's a bit of a hike, but should we check it out? It's not like Command to get a location wrong. I guess even they get bad intel from time to time, huh? Hmm. I wouldn't bet on that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it is revealed in a. Um, I can't remember. It's just because it's you know it's it's informed my understanding of the game throughout you know every playthrough since I found it out. 
so I can't remember exactly when it comes up, but yeah, I think it has come up in this playthrough. So yeah, all of that knowledge, then going back to the beginning of the game, I think that's like, it's such a, you know, replaying it, replaying all of this stuff um, might be seen as kind of a drag on paper, but I think it's like, it's such an, uh, I think it's a really invigorating way to tell a story. Um, and obviously the first Nier did it too. Uh, maybe a little bit better? I kind of think, I kind of like the way that Nier Gestalt, the replays begin at the halfway point. Um, so you don't have to play the intro over and over again, you're just playing... What's your status? This is the target. I'm going to destroy it. Uh, right. I'll provide support. Enemy analysis complete. Software vulnerabilities and penetration path detected. Displaying on HUD. I'll hack this thing and weaken it. And then you get to do the hacking that um, Ninus does for you in the opening, which is... Now, and now you kind of begin to... This is the moment where it, it, you understand the, the stuff that Ninus has been doing when he says, like, I'm hacking. Like, you actually have to now do that in this, uh, in this playthrough. Love the animation of the, um, the beams of light hitting the target as you hack. Having that bar fill up. Prima. I also love the presentation of the grid as the uh, the arena that you hack within. You know, like positioning this machine in amongst like a grid of others is um, I think super interesting. And then I guess this is the first point where like the hacking becomes kind of a challenge, um, unless you're bad at it just in general like I am. Um, so you see, you're not guaranteed the hack every single time. Oh, that's funny. I didn't realize if you um, died the first time, they made it easier. I kind of feel um, kind of feel silly for not getting that first one, but whatever. Enemy missiles intercepted. Yes, I did know that you can lock on hacking. I had forgotten. I probably would have... Uh, probably would have taken me a while to remember that, so thank you for the reminder. As soon as I need to begin hacking within large groups of uh, machines. Oh, God, I love this moment. So now, again, like, you're... you're you, you, you see the connections between... Um, things you've been um things that have been presented as like interface um like options i guess like you can see you know th th this happens in the beginning of ending a when 9s is talking to 2b's new body and, and reconfiguring the visual and audio aspects um but um you know it like the the hacking is um, like the, the the interface used for hacking is the same as like the internal interface of the androids, the same like two D top down grid. Voice functionality recovered. External sound input confirmed. So interesting. Hod, get me staunching gel and logic virus vaccines. Then access the Inadvisable. The subject's vital signs are too poor to attempt field repair. Shut up! Just do what I say! To be just go. I can't remember if to be is that um impassioned the first time. I think she is. We take pride in 
But I think it might be slightly exaggerated in this version. You know, from Ninus's perspective. HO229 flank unit. Command 677 received. Usage rights transferred from 9S to 2B. Requesting acknowledgement. Please. Yeah, it is really jarring, right? Because only moments ago, 2B was saying that emotions were prohibited. I think it, yeah. Yeah, I think you get that same jarring moment the first time. I can't remember. But that's, I mean, you know, even not being able to remember exactly it, but temporarily doubting... Um, the uh like the retelling of it like whether, whether this is like a uh unreliable narrator moment i think it's still like interesting like even if it's even if i am misremembering and it is actually um exactly the same like the fact that i think it might not be is like i don't know that's you're always on the lookout now for these moments that could be different uh and then playing as the pod here defending 9s like by it, itself uh, i love the um the progression of the pods as characters through the game that's like one of the one of the very interesting um uh things that, that one of the very interesting uh kind of growth elements as the, the the story progresses the way the pods have to um take more control oops and uh you know, in this moment, like, defending 9S is, like, the first taste of it. But then once, um, Yoha is no more, you know, the pods making decisions amongst themselves, talking to each other, and then the very end of the game, which, you know, I'm not gonna go into it till I get to, but so interesting. Of, uh, it was so funny that I was just like habitually, instinctively like moving from side to side, like I was playing a first-person shooter, not trying not to get hit. But to be, I found a weakness in the target, hacking it to provide support. Also, the visual like health. Uh, component of the, um, the, tr the kind of the triangle um, of the hacking. We can't shoot 9S. Um, but yeah, losing health by like losing those components at the back as like a visual representation of, of your like lives is, um, is cool. It's very arcadey, very like, uh, yeah. Love this piece of music. Every time I, every time it comes up, I have to mention that it's um, the song that plays in the PS4 near Automata Even theme that I use. Affirmative. Infiltrating enemy subunit. Behavior table adjusted. Balance controls overridden. Enemy unit subjugation complete. Enemy unit subjugation complete. Has successfully commandeered the enemy unit. Continuing support. Yeah, I can't just sit still and shoot <laughs> and lock on. Although it is, you know, when you lock on, you get like slightly worse. Aim. It's fine. Upload two B's data first. Affirmative. Yeah, getting insight into 9S, uploading the consciousness data, the reason that, 9, uh, that 2B can survive the black, block, black box explosion, or at least her, you know, her personality and her memories and experiences can survive 
even if her body doesn't. They really did send the slowest machines they could. about bringing the battle to them <laughs> uh, to be contact command request assistance no it doesn't look like that's going to be necessary iconic moment this strikes me as very um oh great this moment of these mechs rising out of the water is, is, is really reminding me of something. It's very reminiscent of, of some specific scene from some anime series or video game. It's kind of Metal Gear Solid E in, in, it, well. in the way it's revealed. I think you could make a lot of comparisons between Kojima and, the Black Box. Um, and Taro's storytelling right. style and their uh, cinematic influence right. and the way that both of them kind of just like put stuff in games that they think are cool and um, I guess it's like that auteur element as much as I kind of hate that concept but this moment specifically kind of has like a kind of has a Kojima element to it it was an honor to fight with you truly the honor was mine And we return to the, uh, the Yoha satellite. So, yeah, we don't have any recoveries. Although that could be, um, ho holdover from the prior playthrough, because it looks like I have the same amount of funds. So let's, um, restock just before we hit the ground. Normally I do whole numbers, but... Or well, whole ten, tens of numbers, but um, I messed that one up, so it doesn't really matter. I think we can sell. Yeah, probably, but I'll worry about Looks that like later. Time to help Tubi. Um, how are the plug-in ships? Yeah, cool. So it's the same. So everything carries over, uh, which is cool. And then weapons, you only get one. You can only have one weapon at a time. Um. Do we have all of the, access to all the weapons? We do. So Cruel Oath is uh, Ninus's sword. Um, now I don't, I don't know what I should do. Maybe I should have uh, when I'm starting. Maybe I'll go with one light and one heavy. Uh, which light do I want? Let's go small swords. The machine sword is huge. I think we go machine sword. And then for set two, let's get a large sword in there. Do I have any combat braces yet? I don't. And then I think B sword's just the one, right? Get herself set up. She's probably waiting in her room now. The machine sword is so cool to look at. The the hilt? Lord. And yeah, we keep our pods too. Let's have a look at do I have other pod options? Gravity scanner. 
Oh, so I haven't I haven't equipped these pod programs. Um, let's pop the let's pop those on there. I think I might try and find some more pod programs as a priority as well. Um, can we save yet? We can. Oh, and then we get the we get access to the arcade, which is I have spent a lot of time on there. Um, uh, to going through all of the hacking mini games. Um, which you unlock by hacking different enemies. Um, so get out of pausing to explain how much I love this uh, this element of the game. This intersection between um, interface and uh, narrative exposition. The Ludo narrative cohesion, etc. Um, I don't know if I should just skip. No, I'll I'll go through it pretty quickly. Let's get started. From from this point, we'll I imagine. Adjustment in order. Let's start by getting the brightness set. Okay. It is. It's kind of eerie rewatching your um, your playthrough of this. Roger that. Oh, and I should probably let you know that this entire process is being recorded for posterity. It certainly is. Now let's take a look at your voice recognition settings. Seems your voice recognition is set to mute, which isn't going to work. I'm going to call out to you now. Make sure you can hear my voice. Ma'am, are you there? Can you hear me? Here's me uh, taking a moment to explain that this is very cool. I still think it is very cool. Adjust the settings until you can hear my voice. I think I turned it back down as well to sh to show that off. Pace a little bit. This is getting embarrassing. Man, are you there? Very, very predictable. Go ahead and adjust your settings so you can hear. All right, are we good now? And this was me mentioning that I had never not said that there was something coming about his voice. Okay. And deciding not to it for the first time. Uh, hold on, your self-destruct permissions are missing. Wait a sec, we need to restore those. I could set it for you, but you should probably do it yourself. Regulations and all, you know? Again, probably spending some time explaining no, that this is a cool you moment. you need to leave that turned on. Yeah, you can't really do that. It needs to be turned on, except in very specific cases. I'm afraid I can't leave this as is, ma'am. Please give your permission. Hey, come on now. I'm just trying to follow regulations here. Hey, come on now. I'm just trying to follow regulations here. Hey, come on now. I'm hey, just come trying on to follow now. regulations here. I'm just trying to follow regulations here. Okay, good. If things go wrong during an op, you may have to sacrifice yourself in order to finish it. So, once you're finished making adjustments, you can go ahead and close this out. I know no one likes the idea of self-destructing, <laughs> but that's what regulations call for. Still, I'll keep it a secret from the commander. Thank you. Thank you, Ninas. So I think we can skip this now. Oh, apparently we can't. Hello? Did I just... Hello? None of my buttons are working. Um, okay. I don't, I don't remember... Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. We're out. <laughs> Morning.
9S. The commander's put me in charge of your maintenance, ma'am. That means I'll be performing regular checks on you from now on. I see. Oh, don't worry. We 9S models are the best around, you know. Though I suppose we're not exactly known for our modesty. <laughs> Funny Jack. 9S. Hmm? What is it, ma'am? Stop, Stop calling, calling me ma'am. Ma huh? There's so all of this is exactly the same as the first playthrough. All right, if you say so. Except you, you can make 9S spin oh, in this scene I instead of forgot. 2B. The commander was calling for you. We better go see what's up, man. Or to be. Great. Um. Man, yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing useful here. You need to be near an access point to save your data. You can see access points on the close range map. Be sure to save often. It is weird that they go to such lengths to, to replay these um these moments. Um oh yeah you get you can you keep all of the uh, prior emails and then you get a, a new set of them as well. Hacking library and test mail. Nothing nothing interesting to look at yet. Maintenance finished? Yes, Commander. Let's just get to the ground as quickly as possible. And, uh, I need you to head to the doesn't you? We haven't, so we'll need you to understood. So we've 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 heard all of this before. None of this is new. The surface? That means we'll be getting flight units, huh? Better head for the hangar. <laughs> Usually we can't get near flight units. They're way too expensive for us grunts. Too bad they can't mass produce these things yet. The hangar's up ahead. Let's go. It's weird that he says that in spite of being in a flight unit at the beginning of the game in the first mission. Um, but hey, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna uh, split hairs. model like you to a recon job. If all they want is intel, we scanner models are built for that kind of thing. Orders are orders. All right. Orders are right. orders. Missile Barrage. Didn't we have that in the opening? I guess we... I don't know. Okay, probably just needs to reintroduce it to you, anyway. So yeah, we've got the... we've got... I can tell I've got the plug-in chips from the, uh... existing playthrough, because I'm getting the, um... the Deadly Heal, which is... Saving my butt regularly. So I think today I'm going to try. Uh, I'll probably avoid side quests um, again, unless I come across anything that I think is like particularly interesting. Um, I can't think off the top of my head what might be that interesting to to do, but um, I kind of just want to get through ending B um, kind of quickly. I think probably what I'll do for future streams is um, Maybe I'll split up um, side quest and main quest 
uh, playthroughs. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's for me to work out. So yeah, we can, uh, oh, can we do these yet? We can! So now we can start hacking into the um, extra chests that we haven't been able to access until now. And immediately we get a brand new item. The Phoenix Sword. Let's have a look at what... Uh, what's up with the Phoenix Sword? Oh, that's a good design. Um, is it better than the Beast Lord? It is not. But maybe when we upgrade it, it will be. Target location acquired. Marking on map. Proposal. Proceed to target location. Sure. Uh, so, returning to the overworld, what is interesting? Um, well, for starters, we've still got all of our save points. We don't need to fight off the robots to gain access to them. Uh, can we quick? We can't transport between them yet, so we'll have to re-unlock that. Um, According to our intel, none of the machines in this area are hostile. We've been seeing more and more enemies like this lately. They just stand there and stare into space. It's pretty weird. So yeah, it is. It is nice. I I, I said this a lot in the first playthrough, but um, kind of knowing the state that this area eventually falls into, like the the huge chasm in the middle with um, lots of enemies around, very few uh, animals, and um, oh, so this guy is not passive. They're all, these guys are all mad at me. Um, yeah, I don't know, I think, um, I probably said about as much as I need to say already about this area. Rather than repeating myself, let's just, uh, let's just enjoy the game progress through. So Might have to look up uh, we should probably go talk to their leader first thing. Where all of the um, locked boxes are, because I've seen so many I should have been I should have been noting. I think there's one in there. Uh, there's a couple in the camp from memory. And I also want as a priority the chip that lets me automatically pick up items as I run over them, because that's just going to be like a real good quality of life thing. There's one. And there's Devler and Poplar in the background there, they were here all along. Be? Um, yes, well, the bunker told me to expect you. My name is Anemone. I'm the- you must be the- well, Let's please just... feel- We've seen all this. We've- we've- we've... So we got the weapons dealer, we need to find some stuff for him. And the supply trader, we need to find some stuff for him. everything the supply trader asked for. Oh, and we've already got it all, because we just had it. Great. Man, these chores are a real pain in the butt, huh? <laughs> the They're not really. The Resistance is a valuable ally to your hub. By helping them, we also help ourselves. So no, I don't think they're a pain. Yeah, oh, yeah. just let me talk to the weapon guy. back. Yep, we got the uh, Ship of Theseus uh, comparison here with this gentleman's leg. Um, again, all things we've discussed already. Uh, do we have the stuff for... No, we don't. Okay, so and then we've got... I'm good. Alright, let's get this uh, weapons dealer's 
uh, items, and then we can pretty quickly. Once upon a time, too bad vegetation's claimed most of it now. Uh, then yeah, we can very quickly kind of speed through these opening moments. Operator two one zero to nine S. This is your regularly scheduled contact. This is nine S. Nothing to report. Weather's sure nice today, though. Nothing to report. Copy that. And no need for a weather report. Operator two one zero out. So such a difference between oh, uh, 9S's operator and uh, 2B's operator. About you. Uh, 6 0 versus 21, uh, 2 1 0. So that was what her name was. Um, real contrast uh, that I think, you know, like obviously highlights the, the difference between um, 9S and 2B's like, style of communication. Report. Records show that vegetation has grown to an abnormal size since the departure of humans. Hmm. What? This is the place that weapons trader was talking about. Uh oh. I'm picking up hostile machine life form. So I think in this playthrough, maybe just to kind of make it different and interesting, I'm probably going to do mostly hacking, um, unless that gets a little tiresome, which is possible. Uh, again, I will. Uh, Reserve the right to uh, to change my mind uh, depending on the enemy and depending on how quickly I want to get through a section. Oh boy! Yeah, I know, I know. Cool. I remember what you need to accomplish in order to be able to take over the bodies of the machines, rather than just explode them. Something changes that allows you to uh, use their bodies. Maybe it's a plug-in chip. I'll look back into that. Maybe it's just a particular section of the game that you can do it in. Not bad. It's if they're unaware of you? Yeah, I think you might be right. Um, okay. This is definitely one of the, um, the worst parts of the game, is trying to find item drops for for quests in the grass of the overworld. Uh, and one of the reasons why I really want to prioritize finding the plug-in chip that automatically picks up items for you. Um, okay, let's... Instead of running around, let's just take a quick look. Can we see it? Hmm. How annoying. Maybe if we get up high. Hmm. You here? Don't know how far away from that red circle it can uh, drop. Let's um, just pick this up just in case. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> this has got to be it, right? Boom. That should be enough. It was hiding. Let's get these back to the traitor. To the traitor? Alright, let's, uh, let's test out this theory. Yeah, we go. Remote control. Cool. So now, uh, now I'm this guy for a bit. So 
so yeah, that'll come in handy at uh, a couple of key points um, when I want to be doing large amounts of damage to uh, large quantities of units hacking into you know the bigger um, the bigger bodied boys and uh, self-destructing is um, from memory I think pretty effective in taking care of enemy waves um, I might be wrong again I'm kind of relearning uh, bits of this game replaying it and um, finding out that some of my memories of my first playthrough are incorrect. And isn't that interesting? And isn't that kind of what this game is about? Is about, about perspective and memory and... Kind of, I don't know. Mostly talking shit. Great. You bet. Alright, can we upgrade anything? We can! Ooh, we got some stuff to, uh... We got some stuff to upgrade. Okay, let's... So we're gonna need five beast hides to upgrade a lot of these. Both of these. Cruel Oath and Virtuous Contract. Let's, let's do Cruel Oath. I mean, they're both exactly the same. Black and white blades. Um... Let's see what else. Iron Will, Phoenix Sword. Phoenix Sword gets powerful. I'd really love to upgrade the Cypress Stick as soon as possible. Uh, but seeing as we're using... Machine Sword, can I... Okay, we need Dented Sockets. Let's, um... Let's just upgrade... Ooh, we can do two upgrades to Phoenix Sword. Great. And then Cruel Earth, let's just get one in there. Oh, two. Beautiful. Big upgrades. Well, let's, um, we're gonna have to definitely re reconsider. Oh yeah, Mass Immune, I think, is the weapon stealer that can upgrade weapons to level four in the, uh, in the forest. So now let's reassess our weapon sets, because I think, um, It's possible we've got... Yeah, Cruel Oath is way, way more impressive now. Attack speed is up. We don't get the robot discount, but... Um, I'll equip the uh, machine sword when we go to the village. And then... Um, probably Phoenix Sword, right? Oof! Huge damage. And the attack speed goes up. Um, let's also have a look at the stories we've got. Um, actually, let's not, just because I don't want to read them out loud. Um, I just want to see the Phoenix Sword story. Oh yeah, I do, I'm beginning to remember now. Um, look, suffice to say, if you're, if you're playing this game, um, and you, uh, you want to, you want to see some of the more, um, I guess like it's simultaneously like on the nose and subtle because they're kind of tucked away these like stories they're hidden in this menu um, totally optional uh, but when you read them it kind of uh, it lays bare a lot of the themes of, of the game um, in these like little parables um, and the format of each of them having like four parts is very um, it's kind of like a poetic form of its own, even if they're all slightly different in in tone and in um con in, in content. Uh, some of them are like written in in um you know various forms of, of you know, strict like poetic um, cadence. Some of them are just stories. Um, I'm trying to remember, there's one that's particularly interesting that I uh, kind of wish I could just um, oh yeah we can just go through them like this um, yeah some of them are um, 
some of them are sort of diary entry style, some of them are, yeah, this week, first encounter with my lover, failed to connect with my lover. Um, some of them explaining where the items come from, some of them just stories. Anyway. Cool, cool aspect of the game. Alright, let's uh, hit the desert. Uh, I will be saving as well, just because... Oh, we got the transport. Oh no, just a bunker. Checks out. Uh, cool, so here... Oh, what's this? Operator to 9S. Transferring coordinate data for the location specified by Resistance Leader. Nice, Operator. You work fast. Mindless chatter drains energy, 9S. Please keep your comments reserved for mission-related topics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thought I could make it through there. Um, that is a total flirt. With everybody. Or with every, uh, with every woman, I guess. Um, yeah, I had forgotten about his interactions with, uh, with his operator. It's funny. <laughs> 